South Africa is experiencing its worst drought on record, and rivers that have flowed for the last 100 years are now drying up. Despite their critical importance for people and biodiversity, freshwater ecosystems are the most threatened on the planet, and South Africa is no exception. Impacts like dams, alien plants, over abstraction of water for agriculture. All of these things are changing our rivers and driving many of our freshwater species to the edge of extinction. Every ecosystem needs an ambassador, and in these rivers, it's the freshwater fish. The Cedarberg is home to one of South Africa's most threatened freshwater species, the Clan William sandfish. These algivores travel vast distances to spawn in the headwaters of rivers, events that were first captured by the Bushmen many centuries ago. Sandfish were once abundant in the mighty Ulifans and Durang rivers, but today there are only two small tributaries where they can effectively spawn, and within these, even smaller stretches where young sandfish can still survive. Natural barriers like these rock falls are all that prevent alien fish from invading these last refuges, and many of the pools that once sustained sandfish through the summer are now completely dry. As a freshwater biologist, what scares me most is that with all these threats and no young fish to build the next generation, sandfish are swimming rapidly towards extinction. But there is still hope. By finding young sandfish and moving them to safer pools upstream, we can help boost their chances of survival. And by working with landowners to reduce invasive species, we can conserve our rivers, our fish, and all the other life they support. This is a story about our relationship with fish, past, present and future. It's an opportunity to film and study these ancient migrations for the very first time and through them reimagine our relationship with water. We don't have the right to decide if a fish must die or if a fish must be alive. Long before you believe the fish was there already. A fish and a river and nature deserves to be respected. Wow. <laughs> What an interesting story. I mean, it's so heartwarming to see those little, little tiny sandfishes and to think that most of them may not even grow up to juvenile stage. Well, interestingly, we have the honor of interacting with the same Dr. Jeremy Shelton on this episode. It is the pilot series for Swimway Africa um, series and on this series we would be learning more about migratory fish in africa um why they're important and of course we'll be interacting and learning from experts and specialists as well as artisanals working in various regions across africa um you know to save migratory fish species this particular group of animals are very important so yes, welcome. My name is Wani Afronali. I am from Nigeria and I'll be your host on this episode. Jeremy Shelton, you're welcome to this edition. Hi Wani, yeah, thanks very much for, for having me um, on your show. Um, and yeah, what a great idea, what a great concept. Um, yeah, looking forward to chatting with you. Okay, so before um, the viewer, you would have seen a, a video we previewed. Um, Jeremy has been working on freshwater species and particularly a, a fish called sandfish. Maybe he would tell us the scientific name for that particular fish. I presume that sandfish is a common name or local name uh, given to the fish. And then he's been working on relocating 
this particular species to a safer location where hopefully they wouldn't go into extinction. But before he tells us um, more about that particular lot of a project, I'd like for um, Jeremy to tell us what migratory fish is. Jeremy. Yes, Wani. Well, you know, to me, every fish is a migratory fish. Um, I know that normally we think of we think of them as these big species that undertake long journeys. But if you look closely enough, you know, every fish has to has to move during its life, you know, has to get to a different place to breed, maybe a different place to feed and um, sometimes just dispersal through a riverscape. So um, my definition of migratory fish is perhaps broader than most people. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> okay. So if ever fish uh, does migrate, then um, we could be saying that um, Swimwear Africa would be protecting every fish species. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, sometimes <laughs> it might just be a, a small fish that maybe lives in one pool, right, for its okay. whole life. But you know, during the spawning time, it might swim up to the front of that pool where the water's richer in oxygen and more bubbly. And then mm -hmm. during high flows, it might migrate down into the bottom of the stream bed to, to take shelter. So I think, you know, migration is really just a, a word for, you know, significant movements in the in the life history oh. of a fish. So, I, yeah, I think I think swim bay, the Swimway project might have a broader scope than previously imagined. <laughs> <laughs> OK, interesting. So what particular kind of migratory fish do you have in South Africa? I mean, with, in terms of uh, movement from one type of ecosystem to another, say freshwater to estuary or to um, the ocean, the seas? Yeah, uh, so we have in South Africa quite a range of different uh, different approaches to migration. Uh, okay. We've got yet yeah, some, well, actually one of the biggest um, migratory phenomena in fish in this part of the world is um, something called the sardine run. And that's that's a marine marine fish migration where you get this huge flux of tiny little little sardines not that tiny about that big. okay um is yeah, it the one that put in a can and they ship to different parts of the world because i think i eat what they call sardine yeah so, you've probably eaten that you know. one yeah. okay <laughs> so they start off their migration here where 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 i live in cape town and then they where the water's quite cold the atlantic ocean mm. and then they head up the east coast of of south africa to do their to them to do their migration and that's apparently a migration that can even be seen from way up in the sky from far away so it's very very significant natural wow. phenomenon that yeah um so that's all marine and then we have some fish that's you know use estuaries as well like you mentioned um a great mm -hmm. example of that is the is the dusky cod a fish that gets to well over a, a meter, a really, really big fish. And they actually really, their favorite place to be is in estuaries. Um, and they okay. spend a lot of their life yeah, in, in, in estuaries, but they, they, all, they breed at sea. So they do need to leave the estuaries and move out to the ocean to, to complete their life cycle. How long, how long have you done this? Because you're talking like one big fish. <laughs> no, I think I just hang, I just hang around, um, I just hang around uh, knowledgeable people and try to pry their stories out of them. So, and I tend to <laughs> accumulate those stories. But from the video, family. we could see you in that video. It, it, it felt like you live with these fishes, you know, <laughs> and they understand you as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as much as possible, Wani, I try to. I do try to spend time on rivers, time observing fish, um, because, you know, apart from just being like a passion, it's also, I think, is a key in conservation is really deepening our understanding of, of, you know, what animals, you know, need from their environment um, and like searching for creative ways to, to assist them with that. 
Um, but before we get into the sandfish, you know, I've, I've mentioned a couple of, uh, of marine species, but also we have, mm -hmm. we have freshwater migratory species in South Africa as well. Um, okay. Especially if you head up north into, into Southern Africa, there's some incredible migrations that happen um, in the Zambezi system, you know, a, a system that has a big floodplain and uh, wow. yeah, species that seasonally move onto that floodplain to take advantage of, um, of nutrients there. And um, yeah, another, another sort of species that uses freshwater and the sea are the, are the eels. And we have a few oh, different eels okay. here. Yeah. And for those people that don't know, yeah, eels do do life uh, opposite to salmon. So um, oh. yeah, they, yeah, they call, they're catadromous. So you know, salmon okay. um, salmon uh, spawn in the rivers, but feed okay. at sea. And the oh, eels wow. feed in the rivers, but spawn at sea. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here in South Africa, we've got eels moving up and down our rivers uh, without really knowing it. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> okay. So this sounds really interesting, um, the kind of species you have in South Africa. So how, how do you create awareness and engage communities around you to, you know, key into the protection of these rivers and the fishes? Yeah, Wani, I think that's a great question. I mean, that's... You've really cut straight to the chase there, haven't you? And I think that's <laughs> I think that's really the um, the stage on which you know meaningful conservation happens is um, is actually uh, the you know fostering and nurturing those connections between people and eco ecosystems, between people and and fish and you know, you've asked, how do you do that? And I don't, unfortunately, there's no, <laughs> there's no one size fits all uh, solution for that one. Okay. But um, yeah, w I've been working with a with a re with a really um, sort of diverse and talented team of of people, you know, scientists and creatives and and social scientists to try and really use a, a blended approach of doing that. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. Okay, so let's talk about your project, Relocating Sandfish to a Safer Place. How long have you been on this project? What inspired you anyways? Why the sandfish? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. Uh, earlier you asked me, like, uh, what, is the, what is the scientific name of the sandfish? Um, yes. And the genus that it's in is Labio. So its name is Labio Seberi. And the Labios are a group of fishes that are quite widespread uh, in this part of the world and they they are known quite well known for for doing migrations they're strong swimmers and other people like uh, Gordon O'Brien at uh, University KwaZulu Natal and his and his group have done some really cool work looking at some of the other labio species but where where I'm based yeah down here in the in the western cape so it's really the southwestern corner of south africa we um, we have we don't have many of those species, but the sandfish is one of the ones that we do have. Uh, and yeah, for me, um, my sort of uh, journey with the sandfish started uh, about yeah nearly ten years ago. Uh, Wow! Yeah, That's so, yeah. I was really a huntlanger, which is an Afrikaans wor word for just someone who's helping out in the field. But there was some some mm -hmm. other people that are now my colleagues, basically doing some doing some surveys in the in the rivers where these sandfish live. And what they found in 2012, like a decade ago, that there was this sudden huge decline in the sandfish population. Uh, that had formerly been quite abundant and quite 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 widespread. So that uh, that was quite a shock. And from there, they basically well, we basically figured out that the the main problem is they're struggling to recruit. Um, so the fish, the the sandfish that were still alive in the system, the big ones, you know, they were spawning, but none of the little fish that are hatching out of their eggs were surviving. So every year you've just got these big fish getting older and bigger and none, no young fish coming through to 
re replenish them, replenish the population. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was um, that was a uh, about a decade ago, and when when those observations happened, and yeah, since then um, we've seen further decline and tried to think about some some things that we that we can do to to yeah, to prevent uh, the sandfish going extinct. Wow, this is an interesting story because. Imagine if we keep consuming the sandfish, just the big ones, and there are no, you know, offsprings, then they'll definitely go into extinction. So how far have you come with the campaign and uh, relocation? Yeah, so you, you mentioned the word relocation, and yeah, that's that's an important word, and I guess that really is at the heart of of what we're doing with this with our project. Um, we've uh, we've realised that probably one of the most helpful things we can do is to is to try to um, try to increase the recruitment of the sandfish to try and increase the survival of the little fish you see one of you what happens <laughs> is um, after those little sandfish hatch out of their eggs they mm -hmm. um, yeah they they actually get get hunted by invasive fish species alien species that uh, oh. that uh, oh. yeah came into came into the rivers here about 50 years ago so you've got this mass kind of uh, predation unnatural predation wow. of, these, of these little sandfish yeah so in 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 its simplest form our project's really trying to get those little fish out of those dangerous habitats for long enough for them to grow to a bigger size um, a size of about 20 centimeters so that they'll no longer be vulnerable to predation oh by the alien God, fish. Way. Does that make sense? Okay, That's a brilliant, of course it does make sense. Cool. I mean yeah. a 20 centimeter then they can fight for themselves, you know, That's they it. can fight the predator, they could um, defend themselves as well. Exactly, so Wani, yeah. and the way that we're, point. yeah, and the way that we're doing that is, you know, at the heart of our campaign is really to instead of being a group of scientists that parachute into an area to try and save the day, we're investing a lot of time into getting to know not only the riverscapes um, where we're working, but also the people that are um, that are living in these areas. You know, these are the people who have a, a deeper understanding of the area. These are the people that ultimately, you know, are are responsible. Uh, for for the rivers that flow through in this case through their through their farms. So we uh, a big part of our campaign is to is to try to understand more about the relationship between the people on the ground and their rivers and their fish, and to try and play play a bit of a role in um, yeah sort of uh, nurturing those connections yeah between people and freshwater. And it's been pretty cool because. In our project, we've literally been like trying to find out where these fish are spawning, where these tiny little sandfish are, and then actually going with the landowners, with the farmers, with the community members, and together as a group, we've been trying to rescue these little fish and take them to safer places where they'll be able to grow for a couple of years and get big enough. <laughs> but when you relocate, is it aquaculture now, or you still leave them in the wild? I'm yeah. trying to understand. Cool. So we take them out of the river when they're tiny, okay? And okay. we relocate them to farm dams. Um, so oh, a dam, cool. yeah, it's just another word for a reservoir. Uh, mm -hmm. And these farm dams are quite plentiful in the in this area. They're a, it's a way that farmers keep their water over summer so that they have a consistent water supply. And what we've done is worked with a few different farmers to remove the alien fish from those dams to create sanctuaries okay. for these little sandfish to survive in and to grow in. Interesting. Wow. I hope I can visit that uh, particular dam and see how the this tiny little fish is going. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You're okay, welcome. that's a pretty interesting um, one. Please, please do come and visit. <laughs> okay. So apart from the sandfish, um, what are the, I, I think you do work in eels, do? I mean, to what extent do you work in eels? 
Yeah, I would I would love to work on eels. Um, I I haven't actually done much much work on eels before. I've had the privilege of taking some photographs of eels and um, yeah, snorkeling with some eels. Yeah, but it's really um, a lady named Celine Hansen who's also at the University of KwaZulu Natal. And she's really having a quite a detailed look at eels, trying to understand more about their migrations, um, about uh, yeah, their their um, their population health. Eels are are just so mysterious. We know so little about them. We know, <laughs> as far as I understand, we don't even know yet where the, the South African eels breed in what part of the ocean. So there's a lot of oh, wow. of, of, of work questions there. Mm. Okay, so uh, I suppose that the sandfish is native to South Africa. Yeah, it? it's native and um, not only is it native, but it's actually it's quite a narrow endemic species. So yeah, endemic, just another word for um, unique to an area. Um, oh. And yeah, in, in South Africa and particularly where where I'm based here in the Western Cape, we have very high levels of of endemicity. You know, these species that are naturally their distribu distribution ranges are are quite narrow. Maybe just one or two rivers, okay. or just one river catchment, and that really raises the stakes for conservation because you don't have a lot of chances sure. to save a species that's got a small distribution range. And a lot of work would have to be put into that. I, I actually love the fact that you work with farmers and the community people so they understand the work that you're trying to do for them and the moment we have these persons committed to the work it's a lot easier so do you have uh, you know parting words your last message for those in Cape Town in South Africa in general that love sandfish and would love to keep protecting them what can, do you need any kind of support what, what is it you need to you know track the success of this particular project, especially relocating the tiny little sandfish. <laughs> yeah, Wani, well, apart from apart from you coming out to help us with the next sandfish rescue, um, <laughs> yeah, we, um, well, I'll start off just by saying that we're the the communication side of the project, you know, the, there's, there's quite a strong visual retelling side to the project. Uh, really based on the philosophy that uh, uh, that people are much more likely to um, to be interested in something if they can see it and if they can relate to it. Uh, yes. So in terms of this particular project, we, we're working on a few different kinds of visual media around the project, um, uh, photography and film, but also quite exciting. There's a virtual reality component to the project as well. We've been quite fortunate to to have funding um, at the moment from the National Geographic Society, which has allowed us to get quite creative with our visual storytelling. And yeah, the, the easiest way to to stay abreast with that really is just to um, follow Fishwater Films. So that's Fishwater Films. Um, Okay. And yeah, you can just type that into Google, but we're on Instagram and and YouTube. And um, one of my favorite parts of the of the project is our Saving Sandfish web series, where uh, we're sort of chronicling the the events of the project uh, and sharing that on a web series. And um, and yes, and if you <laughs> and if you visit. Um, if you visit our website, it could be the Freshwater Research Center website um, or the Fishwater Films website. There's there's a link there where we're actually trying to uh, raise support and raise a, a few extra funds to to uh, to rescue more sandfish this year. So that's an amazing way um, to support the project. But we also need humans as well. So if anybody's interested in in helping out actually with the rescue. Uh, um, or any of the this okay. conservation work. Yeah, they're welcome to get in touch with me as well. Okay, so um, the website again, would it be www.freshwaterfilms.com? Would that be correct? Fishwater. Fishwater. Freshwater, you say? Fishwater, as in like sandfish? 
fish water films. Okay, fish water, fish water films. Dot com. You got it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and you also had fish water films on Instagram as well. Yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll check that out, and I think um, the viewer could also do that. Um, it's been interesting um, interacting with you on this episode. Um, first of all, I learned a new definition for migratory fish and the scientific name for sandfish and the fact that sandfish is native to South Africa and what you're doing with the relocation um, project. So I'm going to say well done and kudos to you and your team. And um, I'm going to do what I can in my own way. And of course, I know Dr. Kerry would push um, this particular project as well. And I'd love to have a taste of the sandfish. I know I've eaten certain before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Wani, thanks very much for, for having me on the show. And yeah, like I said, you're welcome to, to, come, and, uh, to come and join us uh, anytime. Okay, thank you so much for an interesting session. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.